With daily reports of crime and violence in the streets, many New Yorkers despair that the city just isn't what it once was. Luke Sand is here to tell us that the good old days were worse than we could imagine. His book, Low Life, The Lures and Snares of Old New York, chronicles the city's street life from 1840 to 1920, when gangs made the law and police usually fought for a piece of the action. I'm pleased to have him join us now. Welcome. Well, thank you. Tell me, why are you interested in this, first of all? Why this book? Well, I've been living in New York for 20 years, and I've been on the Lower East Side for about 15 of them. And I was, first of all, it came out of a basic curiosity about the place where I lived and the buildings I lived in, their tenements, they were built in the late 19th century. I wanted to know who had lived in those before myself, my generation. You know, who had lived in them when they were new, in right. fact, uh, before they started crumbling. Um, and um, and also, I was interested in in trying to find some kind of essence of New Yorkness, right. you know, some some just basic extract there. And how'd you go about finding out? Uh, well, I did it pretty much. I don't have any training as a historian, so I I, I had to do it by semi accident. I read as much as I could. I read newspapers, guidebooks, almanacs, letters, diaries. Uh, looked at a lot of photographs. Looked at movies. And, and they told you what? Well, I kind of was looking for some sort of gestalt, right. you know, just the, the broad outlines of the story. And, um, and when it came to telling the story, I had to decide to put it between certain dates, bracket it a certain right. way. And, and I want to concentrate on the lower part of the island. And I want to concentrate, too, on, um, I guess you could say, new, why do people come to New York? Well, for bread and circuses, and I was interested. Bread in, and circuses. Yeah. yeah, and I was interested in the circus aspect. Yeah, and what's the circus aspect? Well, you know, it's um, it's a port city. People come, um, yes, to earn a living, to flee from uh, persecution right. elsewhere. But they get distracted along the way. They get yeah. distracted by flashing lights and and power and money and so on. Um, and so crime and entertainment seem to revolve around each other. And, and, and what surprised you in terms of what you found? What were the myths that you think you'd destroy? Well, one thing that came as a bit of a surprise, really, is that, um, I mean, I hate to contradict you. You just said the, the, old, the old days were worse. Well, they were and they weren't. The, yeah. the fact is that it's, it's not so much that there's been a progression in either direction. It's that it, things the spiral old days were around. They, things come back. There are periods of panic, there are periods of life being cheap, and so on, and they, they alternate. Yeah. And if you looked for today, you would find me, where would be the closest sort of, I mean, if, if are you suggesting, for example, you know, that, it, that the, whatever we're coming out of now, and wherever we're going, that there was a similar period, because, because like, that the city, that the life of a city, like a business cycle, has its own sort of rise yeah, I and suppose fall. so, yeah. yeah. I, you know, we're in a recession right now, and uh, perhaps a depression. There have been periods like this. There wasn't just the great one in the 1930s. Yeah. There were some in the 1870s, 1890s, yeah. et cetera. What was the satisfaction for you in this? Um, well, part of it was just um, the kind of thrill of um, making my own time machine, uh, just setting myself down in a random year, 1892, and walking the streets. Yeah. I was really... Now that, see, that's extraordinary yeah. to me. I mean, you really could do that because you had spent, you were able to, in a sense, have, inhabit that time. Yeah. You had to inhabit that time to write this book. That's right, yeah. It's, it's, that, it's that stuff of uh, an era that comes out of those little accidental pieces, those, that comes out of reading the small ads in newspapers yeah. rather than reading the stories. Newspapers tell you a lot. Yeah, def yeah. definitely. In do. every way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, cl include, and what did the ads tell you of the time? Oh, um, you know, they tell you about the language. They tell you about what people's priorities were. They tell you about what they don't tell you about, yeah. too. You know. I mean, what's not there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what's, what's left out. Um, and it, obviously they tell you about value. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, um, well, I'm sorry. Well, and, and the characters that you find, I mean, what, who, did, did you find one person that gave you more? Well, th there were these two characters who um, seemed particularly archetypal in terms of New York City, uh, Chuck Connors and Steve Brody. Steve Brody is the man who claimed off the, he claimed he jumped off the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah. Nobody ever really saw him do it, but he parlayed <laughs> it into a career. Yeah. And Chuck Connors sort of did even less. He, 
what he did was he personified the spirit of the Bowery. And he, he was a bar fly. He, yeah. he hung around. But he made it to Broadway musicals as a result of having this character. And this seems so New York City and very 20th century as well, the idea of having a, a whole career based on um, just uh, behavioral tics. Yeah. You were born in Belgium. That's right. right? Yes. Uh, did, did, do you, did you come to know and love New York more because you wrote this book? Um, yeah, I think in a way it also comes out of my, my love of New York and my suspicion of it too. You know, you can't quite have one without the other, I think, yeah. in a way. It, it, a love-hate kind of thing or yeah. a love-suspicion? Well, yeah, love-hate, yeah. yeah. Low life, um, the lures and snares of old New York. Interesting reflections on the kind of city that we are. Thank you very much. Well, thank Pleasure. you. We'll be right back. No, we won't be back. We'll say thank you for joining us, and uh, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow night.